Gosh, man. What do we got next, Charlie? We are now ready for you, Daniel. So we're ready for the, the cooking demo and an introduction to your latest project, please. All right. Thank you for having me. Wait, I just need to change the camera. My brother is going to film because to make this proper. There you go. All right. Thanks for having me. And uh, I was just going to show you how to cook one dish and explain to you a little bit of what we're doing at our restaurant now as we have a, the pandemic going, which has created a bit of a pickle for us here out on the islands in Greece. Uh, a lot of people are unemployed and um, you can already feel the impact of it for, for the locals. You know, it's families who are supposed to start working in the hotels and entire travel agents, uh, industry is about to collapse on us here. So, you know, there are a lot of people depending on this here. Uh, having that said, we thought that uh, how we could help, which we've been doing now for five weeks, is that we created a uh, sort of a soup kitchen where it's a, a kind of a break even where and one person pays for the other, kind of like the Italian concept of cafe sospeso which means a hanging coffee where you go in and have an espresso and then the other person, well, and then you buy a coffee for a person who can't afford it themselves. So we've been doing that now for five weeks and uh, it's still on a, it's been on a small scale, but we've been producing approximately 80 portions per day for people. So that's been fun and it's been nice to help out. So I thought that usually our restaurant, we do a Mediterranean tasting menu and one of our signature dishes is a, a courgette fritter with romesco sauce and uh, you can either top it with uh, some type of pickle. Today we're gonna use some beautiful spring onions that are in season now. So I'll show you how that works. Uh, so, Without further ado, you should toast some almonds here, which would be the basis for the romesco sauce. And uh, into a blender, we will put some beautifully roasted and peeled uh, peppers here. So just add that into a kind of a food presser or food processor or a blender like that. It's a very simple process, but yeah, add that in there very easily. While that is going to cook, we're going to heat up some oil to cook our fritters. Somebody closed this very hard. I had the team set up the restaurant, which didn't really work out, but you know how it is. So add some oil to your pan. Make sure that is nice and hot. You can use whatever oil. We use olive oil here because that's what we do in Greece. Um, take the... Let's go on this, we need olive oil in that as well. So we add that in here. Olive oil. Into the Mix it up. Oh. Now all the seasoning happens. We want it nice and clean. There we go. That's kind of the texture that you were looking for. Beautiful Ooh. paste. Now, I pre-grated a couple of courgettes here. And then just one yellow onion. So, you know, it depends a little bit of what you have at home for this recipe. If you have some carrots, you can put that in. But basically the base you want to is to have a few onions, two or three courgettes, add that in. Personally, I'm a big fan of dill, so I use a beautiful bunch of dill here that is very nice and fresh right now. Chop that up a little bit. Mint is also a beautiful ingredient to use inside of that. A lot of it, you know, it just gives it a nice taste. Now, the mess. We go now. You want to season this very well with some black pepper, a bit of salt, 
don't be shy with the salt because there's a lot of water in these ingredients so they will absorb it and you kind of want to season before you cook it mix it out so ooh, you have a nice mixture now the next ingredients you would add is a little bit of flour i would add the flour before the liquid because it kind of mixes a bit more easy plus you miss the lumps a couple of spoons of flour mix that in neatly and then you kind of want to see everything being coated in the flour not too thick but you know it's still gonna have some still gonna be a thickness to it then after that of course some people use sparkling water i use a lager because it's nice to drink while you cook <laughs> add a bit of a beer in there mix that in and get the texture this is a semi-healthy full vegan dish so small carbon footprint to get everything from your local you farmers like that, market Daniel. you like that daniel yeah <laughs> part of it, <laughs> it? and uh, yeah i think we're ready to cook so just check the oil make sure it's hot enough and you can just put it you can make whatever shapes you want really if you want to deep fry it that works but I prefer shallow frying and make them a bit flat like patties. You can make this into burgers. Keep the mixture for the next day. Make a nice sandwich with it. Anything fried really is good, as they say. Well, that's kind of the chef's philosophy. <laughs> Use oil and salt. You can't go wrong. Butter can come in handy in between. Then fry that up with some more temperature. You kind of want to cook in a semi-high temperature, not too high when it's olive oil, you don't want to burn it, but not too low so the water absor the oil absorbs into your fritters. So make sure their bubbles are the size of small cat eyes, if that makes sense. Hmm. Then uh, we have the spring onion, which we're going to use to top the fritters with. Just give that a nice side chop. Tudor and uh, Annie, I'll be at yours in about two hours and to serve you up these fritters, right? Yeah, we are, we've, got, we've got a bottle. Yeah, excellent. Or, we've got a bottle. We've got a bottle of wine there for us. So, we can, so my blood pressure can go down again. It's the first time I cook it in front of a camera. So. Doing a grand job. It's man. amazing. Oh, you're doing great. Uh, hey Daniel, tell us about the tourist industry and what's happening to people and the people that you've been. Oh, yeah, we're basically fucked here in Greece. We're really, just <laughs> tell you the truth. I'm sorry, but I have to be blunt. It is true. <laughs> we have to be. This is my brother Alex. Sorry, he's behind the camera, but uh, yeah, we kind of we have a small little business here. We have a restaurant and a little cafe. And uh, so, what's happening here is that we won't have any more tourism probably this year due to the COVID-19 and um, that's created a massive pickle for us so we uh, we kind of just have to wait and see it like all of us has to and but, what, but what's happening to the people on the island how many people are employed in tourism and and how many people are now out of work with I would I mean the GDP of Greece that we gained from tourism is about 15 percent but oh, that's wow. on a country scale and here on the island i would probably give i don't have the exact number but approximately 50 to 60 percent 70 percent of the local population are in hospitality industry or closely related to it meaning you are an accountant but your clients are always sure the uh, hospitality uh, industry so what that generates is you know a bit of a problem um, Daniel, so I, I, I heard there are two million, two million <clears throat> tourists come to the islands every yeah. year, two million, and they are like supported by the islands. There's very little other uh, other industry on the islands, and every, I mean, 
you're painting quite a pleasant picture, but everyone's terrified because they only do six months work a year and then they have yeah, six so yeah. months. Exactly as you 18 said. months yeah, without an income. People are desperate and you are doing an amazing job. You're feeding people who are basically starving because the Greek economy is in such a terrible state. That's why I wanted to introduce you to XR because you're, you know, what you're attempting on a small scale is brilliant. But you know more about it, don't you? I mean, we were talking well, about I, I appreciate that, that, that. But, you know, we just do what we can, really. This island has given us so much and um, I personally work as a chef abroad and managed to save a little bit of money this winter and uh, came back and had a few extra hundred euros. So we thought, okay, why not use our facilities and cook for people? Because the tourism industry and the people should have started working about five to six weeks ago and that didn't happen. And if you think about that, this people hasn't been working since last October. Uh, that creates because they're dependent they're season workers these are families who work and gain a salary of six seven hundred euros per month working seven days a week for six months and in turn of that that has created that these people haven't been working since october we're expecting to start gaining money in early april yeah and that hasn't happened so so people are starving. People are literally starving. And this is okay. We're still in the beginning, but I mean, we're not expecting any tourism this year. Some people are saying, okay, we might start getting something in early, mid to mid of July, but it's pretty far fetched. I reckon that people are going to start traveling again because of the risk I and mean, it's too big of a risk. So we just have- uh, Wait, wait. Oh, sorry. Uh, sorry? Can I ask for me? Yes. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think that Greece has been very resilient to this kind of upheaval. I mean, last time there was an economical break, uh, they managed to pull out of it, you know, considering it was so great, you know, in the, the last, uh, last time they, they had to get out of, you know, they had the issue with the euro uh, currency. Um, they managed to get out of it, you know, just yeah. recently. And, yeah, for you know, yeah, yeah. We are, we are in a, yeah, it is, as you said, we just came out from the 2008 crisis that came here in 2009, but yeah, so, but this is kind of, a, it's a bit on a different level here because we still had tourists and had our economy running even after those years, but this one seems to be a bit more difficult. Well, because we won't have our main, our main revenue or our main export, which is tourism. So, yeah. and I'm so sure. to support some of the stuff that uh, Daniel's doing here, guys, if you buy raffle tickets, all the proceeds tonight go to his his project to feed people in in Greece. Which honestly, man, you said you're like we're doing a little thing. We're just feeding eighty people a day. I I don't really know. How that's little that's 80 people a day man that's a ton that's i think i'm i personally am very impressed and i hope uh people as well um that's very kind of you to say no we, man, it's we, we great of you to do <laughs> yeah yeah it's nice we make we make one soup a day with healthy nutritious and i like to think of it as delicious food i don't know annie and tudor could probably be the judge of that yeah but, we go around and buy buy food it's gorgeous and, uh, you know, in the end of the day, it's what we can do. It's, you know, I think for this, for everybody, because I was reading some numbers and we're looking at a globe, on a global level, 1.6 billion unemployed people in the foreseeing future. So if we would ever be able to get out of this pickle that we're in, then I reckon that we all have to do whatever small thing it might be to to help each other out because mm. we can't expect the governments to to bail us out no nope. we're gonna have to go back to a proper barter system otherwise it's yeah. not gonna happen so just to show you here not with a breaking you put the base of romesco on the plate oh. put this beautiful fritters it has a nice little char to them yummy and yeah and then you could just uh I have some nice spring onions, so you add that for a bit of freshness on top. 
just season with a little bit of salt okay. yummy I wish and I pepper and yeah there you go that's, that's our good. dish and you can you just put us through your get funding um, as well so there's a raffle so, option in the chat and there's also a go get funding soups of solidarity yes oh no i have critically low battery that's not good <laughs> don't worry i got I, another worry, way I have to it. Your there we go yeah you guys sorry can sorry seeing this in the chat as we go get funding link as well so people okay. can go there as well to donate to you guys um that's very yeah. very kind of it. everything everything and anything helps the thing is that we have about 10 15 people here that are in that, that literally are broke like they have nothing they the first and one meal they eat per day well we gave them two three soups but the first thing they eat per day is when they come to us at 12 o'clock when we open to eat and um, we are also supporting these people with a small cash donation that we give them and you know we really try sometimes if we have 10 15 20 euros extra we give them something to you know buy dog food or buy other necessities hygiene products or whatever it can be that one needs to to go through life and these are people working you know these are people that a few months ago lived a normal life but they were expecting and you know it's like you know when we take for granted that the world should work as a clockwork we get these surprises and they kind of just lost everything in a split second you know they should just start earning money these yeah it's five weeks ago and now they don't so now they're in a pickle well, but yeah that's, doing what you can in some yeah, it's making a huge difference to, to many lives right now yeah, it's, yeah, it feels like it. People appreciate it. Really well, you guys can definitely appreciate it as well. Um, show, you know, I I think he Daniel uh, would be grateful for your support, and so would we. So just feel free if you guys can go to go. If you guys have spare money, I know that's a big ask at the moment, and I know a lot of people are in different situations. But if you are able, please donate. Um, and all the proceeds tonight are going to go to. Uh, Daniel, his brother, and their cause, uh, feeding people in Greece. So thank you very much, Daniel. Charlie, what Thank you, you got very next? much for having me. So if you need anything, if you want to cook this recipe, as well. can, you, can you share the recipe? I'm obsessed with courgettes. So yeah, I, I really want amazing, the... It's an amazing uh, dish. It's one of the dishes, the only dishes we had on the menu in our restaurant since we opened. Oh, great. Thank you. Absolutely. And well done to your share... brother for great camera work. Yeah, it was yeah, pretty good. Uh, Cheers, man. Let's <laughs> <laughs> try to be as creative as possible, you know. Yeah, no, no. Peace, uh, yeah but change, turn it around. Turn it around. <laughs> <laughs>